All right, we're live on Facebook. This is Pastor Mike Burns, and today is Tuesday, January the 16th, 2018, and it's time for another another edition of God's Healing Word. I come to you every Monday through Friday about this time between 2 and 3, and I share a little bit each day on God's Healing Word. We've been studying as of last Friday the uh, healing miracles of Jesus in the Gospels, and we're gleaning some things from them. Yesterday, we began to talk about uh, the healing of Peter's mother-in-law, the Apostle Peter's mother-in-law, how that she had a great fever and how God ministered to her supernaturally. The story is found in Matthew, the eighth chapter, Mark, the first chapter, and Luke, the fourth chapter. Now, it's interesting, we said yesterday, how that in each of the chapters of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, in Matthew, Mark especially, it just seems to indicate that Jesus touched her hand and the fever left her immediately. But, you know, Luke, we said from Luke 4, and I believe it's in verse, uh, let me just double check that verse for you here. Luke 4, 38 and 39, uh, it says that Jesus would enter and he rebuked the fever. Go over to God. Now, the Bible said this was a great fever. Luke, who was a, a medical doctor, uh, the Bible calls him the beloved physician, that he himself would have given more details about this particular issue with Peter's mother-in-law. She had a great, or in the Greek, it's the word mega fever. And, you know, maybe today you've been battling with that, or you have children, or maybe your spouse or someone close to you that you care about has a fever right now. I want you to notice that Luke, the doctor, the beloved physician, who was also a disciple and an apostle of the Lord, shared with us in his gospel how that Jesus didn't just touch uh, Mary, uh, touch Peter's mother-in-law, but he also rebuked this fever. Now, it's important, as we said yesterday, and I want to just give you a little bit of uh, reference uh, to the word rebuke. The word rebuke, it, it actually means to forbid something or declare it Ill, to declare it illegal. This is uh, to forbid something or to charge something vehemently or violently. And it has the meaning of to judge something or someone from a higher position of authority. You know, when you think about sickness and disease, how it attacks our physical bodies, most Christians don't think this way, but we should start thinking like this, that sickness is something that Jesus has put under our feet. Do you know the devil, Satan himself, is already under your feet if you're a member of the body of Christ? Jesus has already defeated him, spoiled him, he brought him to nothing, and he is a big fat zero. And you see, he has lies and deceptions that he uses against us. And sometimes, yes, we'll feel the feelings of something trying to come on our body. And if we're not aware of it, we'll release our authority to the devil through which he'll use his ability to put something like the flu on us, to put fevers and aches in our body, our joints, arthritis, cancer, all kinds of diseases. He is the one that was the author of sickness and disease. But Jesus rebuked the fever, Luke said. And in Peter's mother-in-law, in Luke, the fourth chapter, verses 38 and 39. And again, it means to forbid something. To rebuke means to forbid it. You know, it kind of ties in with what Jesus said in Matthew 16 and verse 18. He told Peter and the disciples that he was given to them the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now, keys are used to unlock things. And, you know, Jesus said, whatsoever things you shall bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, a lot of people have much uh, disagreement about what that actually means there, but I will tell you that several translations bring this out, and I think they have it right when they say that you can only bind what God has already forbid or bound in heaven, and you can only loose what God, from heaven's standpoint, has already loosed. Well, the finished work of Jesus has already spoiled and bound up every evil force of hell. And not only that, it has loosed every blessing that... that
Jesus died to give to you and to me. It's already been there. So that's why we can bind and we can lose. We can bind sickness. We can forbid sickness from spreading in us, in our spouses, in our children. Come on, somebody. And in anybody who will allow you the authority to come into their life and to declare and decree they're healed by the stripes of Jesus. You see, we have the power of binding and loosing. And that's what the word rebuke means. Jesus rebuked. He forbid that fever from existing. You know, one of the words for rebuke also, I didn't cover it yesterday, is also the word that means to chide. You know, I'll be honest with you. I had seven strokes in through parts of my brain. And there are some days I feel just absolutely great. And there are other days I don't feel good at all. And, you know, the enemy has tried to give me visions of myself in ambulances. And he's tried to give me visions of myself having more strokes and, and you know, collapsing and falling down. And, you know, in the shower, in the bathroom or wherever, passing out. My wife having to reach down and, and he plays these scenarios in my mind. Well, I tell him, I say, devil, I start to say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I cast down your thoughts. I'll never be paralyzed. And I'm not paralyzed right now, but I'll never be paralyzed. But I tell you what, you have been paralyzed by the Lord Jesus Christ. You have been brought to nothing. You, by his blood, have been defeated and spoiled and made an open shame and show of glory to God according to Colossians 2.15. And you see what I'm doing when I do that is I'm actually rebuking. I'm chiding the enemy. I'm reminding him of his utter defeat and his utter failure that he is in everything he's trying to do to people like me and you. And you see, you've got to take this attitude of a rebuke a little more seriously. I have a teaching I did years ago called the power of a rebuke. And many of us don't understand that. We we hear of it in our government, you know, when a senator or a congressman or the president, for that matter, may do something that is against the rules, uh, they'll censure him. In other words, that's another word for rebuking. Well, you know, it's more than that when it comes to dealing with the devil, when it comes to dealing with sickness. We're not just censuring sickness. We are chiding it. We're judging it as not being from God. That's part of the curse that Christ has redeemed us from. And glory to God, that's the attitude that we have to take. Can you say amen? So Jesus rebuked the fever in Peter's mother-in-law. And we said yesterday something to you that he also rebuked the wind in the midst of the storm. Not only did he rebuke the wind, he rebuked the waves, and he even cursed a fig tree. And guess what? All of them responded to his words. Now, Luke is the only one of the gospel writers who recorded Jesus rebuking the fever in Peter's mother-in-law. Luke, being the beloved physician, was trained to pay close attention and record important facts. If Jesus could rebuke sickness, guess what then? You and I can do it too in his name. You have the authority to rebuke this. I was talking to a gentleman the other day. Maybe he's watching today. I can't really see who's watching right now. But uh, this brother, I haven't seen him in a long, long time. And I knew when he was a young boy. Uh, but he was telling me that his daughter battles with fevers. And I told him, I said, stop asking God to heal your daughter. I said, you as the father have a spiritual jurisdiction over the fever. And I said, you can command it. If you're born again, you have been given the authority in the name of Jesus. Command that fever to lose your daughter and to get out of her body in the name of Jesus. You have that authority. So many of us are asking God to do well, God is saying, no, I have given you the authority. I've given you the power of attorney to use my name, the name of Jesus, against that fever, against that sickness, against that disease that may be attacking you, your children, or your loved ones. I'm telling you today, you have a God-given authority. And if Jesus could rebuke the sickness, then we can do it in his name. Again, let me read from John 14, beginning in verse 9. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you? And yet, has you, have you not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest not thou, thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwells in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. And then in verse 12, Jesus says something that is so profound. It all seems in verse 9 through 11 that Jesus is speaking exclusively about himself. 
But then he says in verse 12, Truly, truly, I say unto you, He that believeth on me. Is that you? I know that's me. I believe on him. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Now, when Jesus went to his Father, he sent down the same Holy Spirit that anointed him to anoint us. Listen to me. Jesus never did one miracle as the Son of God. Now, he was the Son of God, but the Bible says he laid aside his glory, his deity, all those attributes, and he became a man and had to be anointed by the Spirit of God. That's why it wasn't until he was around 30 years of age after he'd been baptized in water by John that the Holy Spirit descended upon him and lighted upon him in the form of a dove. And from that day, he became filled with the Spirit, and he went into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. But when he returned after 40 days of fasting and after 40 days of being tempted by the devil, the Bible says he returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. And he went to church, and he read from Isaiah 61, said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach, to teach, to heal, to recover. Glory to God. These are the wonderful things Jesus came to do. And he said, this day is this scripture of Isaiah 61, 1 through 3, fulfilled in your ears. Now, listen, Jesus didn't just become the one-man show. He demonstrated what it was like to be a believer who is filled with the Holy Spirit. And if that's you today, then you should be walking around like Jesus walked around. He said, the works that I do shall you do also, and greater works than these shall you do. Because I go to my Father, and when he went there, he sent the Holy Spirit to anoint you like he was anointed. So if Jesus could rebuke the fever, or a sickness, or a disease, guess what? So can you. That's right. When he went back to the Father God, he sent down the same Holy Spirit to one on us that had anointed him in his earthly ministry. Let me say this again to you. I want to say it and make sure I'm very clear about it. Jesus never healed one person as the Son of God, but he healed everyone as the Son of Man, anointed by the Spirit of God, which tells us that Jesus defeated the works of the enemy as a man, glory to God, not as a God. What, 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 how impressive would it be if a God had defeated the devil, who was an angelic being, a fallen angelic being at that? But you see, the fact that it was a man that defeated the devil. Let me tell you, angels are stronger than mere human beings. But thank God Jesus defeated the devil in his earthly ministry, and he defeated the devil in his death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and seating at the Father's right hand. And he's now quickening you. He's raised you up, and he's made you to sit together with him in heavenly places. And guess what, friends? We are far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that can be named, not only in this age, but in the ages to come. We are far above today. You're far above sickness. Some of you see yourself just steeped in sickness and disease. Some of you see yourself stuck in a, a disease of long continuance. And that's what the Bible says in Galatians 3.13, that you've been redeemed from. You're not stuck there. Don't you believe for one moment you're stuck there? You might say, well, it sure feels like I'm stuck here. That's a life in the pit of, of hell. You can rebuke that thing and tell that sickness to get off of your body, the symptoms to leave your body, the root cause of it, to get out of your body in the name of Jesus. And don't ask God to do it. No, don't ask God to do it. You do it. You say to it, Get out of my body. You loose me and you let me go. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. See, here's a fact. When Jesus rebuked the fever in Peter's mother-in-law, he was revealing something very powerful to you and I. He was revealing that fevers, they can hear. Listen to me. Fevers can hear. When Jesus rebuked that fever in Luke 4, 38 and 39, it, he was telling us that, fever, that fevers have a ears that can hear. Cancers, guess what? Cancers have ears that can hear. Tumors have ears that can hear. Diabetes have ears that can hear. Arthritis have ears that can hear. And not only can they hear, but they are listening to what you say continuously. Let's speak to our bodies right now. See, you've got to start speaking to your body. You've got to begin to say to your body, body, listen to me. Sickness, 
You listen to me. I don't care if it's strokes because I've had seven in three parts of my brain and it's reversed in my life. Glory to God. I'm healed. I'm not paralyzed. I drive. I walk. I do all the things that uh, people that have had, never had strokes do. And my doctors are baffled by it because God said to me if I would take the weight of his word and put it in my heart and in my mouth and believe about myself what he said about me. He said I would completely reverse these strokes I have and I would stand taller than I've ever stood before. And I'm telling you something. Take the weight of the word of God. See, sickness has ears. Pain has ears. Cancer has ears. Diabetes has ears. Heart trouble has ears. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what your sickness or what your condition may be today. It has ears that can hear and it's waiting to hear what you're saying. And some of you have been saying all the things that sickness loves to hear. Oh, I'm in so much pain. Oh, it hurts so bad. Oh, this medicine makes me feel so queasy. Oh, the doctors say there's nothing they can do for me. The doctors say I'm going to have to live this way for the rest of my life. And you're saying that kind of stuff. I'm telling you, don't you say that again. You stop talking like uh, you're a loser and that you're going to stay sick. I'm telling you that sickness has ears and it will hear when you speak the word of the Lord. See, Ezekiel stood in the valley of dry bones. The Lord said, Son of man, can these bones live again? And Ezekiel said, Lord, you know. And he said, Son of man, I'm telling you, prophesy to your bones. I'm telling you today, as Pastor Mike from Real Church in Long Island, you can prophesy to your body, prophesy to your bones, prophesy to your organs, prophesy to the systems of your body, and say, hear the word of the Lord. He sent his word and healed me and delivered me from my destructions, that Christ hath redeemed me from the curse of the law, being made a curse for me. For it is written, Curse is every one that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on me through Jesus Christ, that I might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. See, hear the word of the Lord, sickness. I command you in the name of Jesus to lead me. I bind you because you've been bound by the Lord Jesus Christ and by the stripes he bore. And by those stripes, I was healed. You see, you have got to rise up every moment of every day and be as diligent as the sickness is trying to be diligent, as the pain is trying to be diligent, as the disease is trying to be diligent. You can speak to it. You can rebuke it. Jesus rebuked the fever in Peter's mother-in-law. You can rebuke fevers because fevers have ears that can hear. Glory to be to God forevermore. I'm excited this morning, uh, this afternoon, I should say. And I'm going to encourage you today, don't you just stand there. That's a teaching I did many years ago. I have a don't just stand there, rebuke it. The power of a rebuke. Don't just stand there, rebuke it. Don't stand there and listen to what the doctors say and have and don't you say nothing about it. Don't you just stand there when the symptoms are manifesting in your body and just stand there and say, oh, I'm going to try to ride this one out. Don't you just stand there. You open your mouth and you begin to speak with the authority of the name of Jesus and you command that thing to leave you, get out of you in the name of Jesus and by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit of God who dwells on the inside of you. Praise God. <laughs> Woo! I tell you, I preach boy so happy here today. And I'm telling you, this is what I found to be true for me. I'm the guy. Listen to me. I had seven strokes in three parts of my brain. The devil thought he could kill me. He couldn't kill me. And he can't kill you either, glory to God. You're going to live at the, you're out your days. You're going to be strong. And you're going to live long, glory to God. And let me tell you, the paralysis some of you are feeling right now, that's going to reverse. And you're going to have full movement again. You're going to walk again. You're going to see again. You're going to hear again right now. God has already done something about your sickness. Glory to God. And you're going to live free. But God's waiting on you to open your mouth and begin to release your faith in what he's done through Christ in the finished work of Jesus. This is Pastor Mike Burns from Real Church in Long Island, New York. And this is Tuesday, January the 16th, 2018. Glory to God. And you've been hearing a message on God's healing word. Would you do me a few things here, favor today? Number one, would you tell me where you're listening from? Write in the comments, say, Pastor Mike, I'm watching from such and such a city. Would you also then share this video 
with your friends. You can even share it right now. Just hit the share button in the lower corner of it and hit share. And maybe you want to write something, maybe not. But just share it, glory to God, because you're connected to people that I'm not connected with. And the more people that share, the more people that we potentially can reach today. Glory to God forever. I'm also going to ask you to visit our website, which is realchurch.cc. And also to download our free Real Church New York app. That's right, you can get it from the Google Play Store or from the iTunes App Store. It's absolutely free. Real Church New York. Make sure you say Real Church New York when you search for it. And then when you download it, you'll have all kinds of free resources there, a free Bible with 12 translations, Greek and Hebrew concordance. It's all free right there. And then you have other messages, articles I've written, messages, videos, audios, things that will stimulate and stir up your faith to believe God today. Hallelujah. And help you grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord. Same thing is true with our website, realchurch.c. Now, today's a good day. For some of you that have never done it, this would be a good day for you to sow a seed toward our ministry. You know, God said to me, son, you're a social media missionary. And you know something? The Bible says, don't muzzle the ox that treads out the corn. Are you getting anything out of what I'm saying? If you are, then you ought to give something today. And you can go to our website, realchurch.cc, and in the upper right-hand corner, is a, a, a icon that says online giving click click that icon and then you'll fill out the form and it's a short form and you can give safe and securely from our website realchurch.cc if you download our free real church new york app and you get it on your on your phone from google play or the itunes app store depending on your device you could also hit the tap on the tab that says give and fill out the form and you can give safe and securely right from our Real Church New York app. You can also text the words Real Church LI, that's the message, Real Church LI, to 77977. If you'll text that, you'll get an immediate reply with a link to the form, the short form that you have to fill out. But once you fill it out, glory to God, you'll be set up to give by texting thereafter. Glory to God. And I thank you for your help. I thank you for assisting us in the work of God. Others of you that say, look, I'm not really tech savvy. I don't know how to use smartphones. I can barely watch you on this on this phone. Well, let me tell you how you could also give today. You can mail us through the U.S. Postal Service a gift uh, to Real Church. Make it out to Real Church to check the money order. Make it out to Real Church, 19 Herbert Avenue. That's 19 H E R. B-E-R-T Avenue in Lindenhurst, L-I-N-D-E-N-H-U-R-S-T, Lindenhurst, New York, 11757. And I thank you for your support here today. Let me also remind you that Thursday night, right here in my home in Lindenhurst, Long Island, New York, I'm going to be having our Journey Through the Bible Experience in my living room. It's a house meeting. You'll be welcome to come. All the information is available on our website, or you can call us at 631 631- 592-1917. That's 631-592-1917. If you'd be interested in having information about where we meet on Thursday nights here in Lindenhurst. Saturday mornings, we're in Freeport at Perfecting Faith Church at 10 a.m. And that's also a great weekend worship experience because we share the building with Pastor Donna McClurkin. And I look forward to seeing some of you come to one of these meetings either on Thursday or Sunday or, both, or Saturday, Saturday or Sunday or both. A Thursday or Saturday or both, I should say. Anyway, I love you so much. Thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for being my friend. And thank you for receiving the good word of God. I love you and God loves you. And I just want to remind you that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah to God. Amen.